Hello, I'm Noah Adams, and I'm presenting Seeking the Narrative, a qualitative review of transgender and autistic autobiography. We don't have a lot of time. I have about eight minutes, so I'm going to be skipping past some stuff, especially the methodology area. But the uh, presentation is going to be available afterwards for you to review at your leisure, and I'll also be around to answer questions. So research on the intersection of transgender and autistic experiences is, as we know, a small but rapidly growing field. Uh, autobiographical material in this intersection is also quite small, but very rapidly increasing. I'll be looking at this from Ian Hacking's Looping Effect, which states that autism narratives are not just stories or histories describing a given reality, they are creating the language in which to describe the experience of autism, and hence helping to forge the concepts in which to think autism. They are developing ways to describe experience for which there is little pre-existing language. So here's an overview of the autistic autobiographical material I was able to find, and it spans from about 2003 to 2020. And you can see that uh, 2017 and 2020 each had three, which was the most in any single year. So you can see that's 15 books, 71 separate texts. Five, five of those books are personal individual narratives, uh, and the remainder are occurring anthologies. Um, seven of those anthologies focus on autism and have uh, the experiences of people who are trans as an aside. Uh, two of those focus on non-binary people, and one of them focuses specifically on people who are both trans and autistic. 40% are published by Jessica Kingsley Publishers. Uh, that number goes up when you take out those that are self-published or are sort of on the border of self-published. So here you can see an overview of the different autobiographical material. And you can see that nodes form around Max Sparrow and that Wen Lawson also has quite a bit of autobiographical material. And there's also a couple of collections of interviews with people who are both trans and autistic. The first is by myself and Bridget Lang, and the second is by Eva Mendes and Meredith Moroni and both collect uh, academic interviews with people who are at this intersection. So the first thing we need to ask is what is trans autistic autobiography? Uh, first of all, it's atypical in that, as we can see, it tends to occur in anthologies that collect the writings of autistics, trans autistics, and trans people in that order. Um, this includes short biographies and poems. It also includes artistic material, although that wasn't included here. I only included textual material. Um, as I mentioned, a node for these publication forms around Max Sparrow that includes of the 15 books, four uh, and 39 of all the texts. So 55% of all texts. Um, both Max Sparrow and Wen Lawson have published material before and after openly identifying as transgender. So this is unique in that we get snapshots of uh, their experiences on exploring gender and exploring different gender identities and descriptors over time. So some of the themes we see is autism diagnosis, whether that's self-diagnosis, late diagnosis in adulthood or childhood diagnosis. What we also see is that some people uh, querying an autism diagnosis and receiving a formal autism diagnosis as adults, when they question their parents, find out that their parents had queried an autism diagnosis as children, or in some cases even received a formal autism diagnosis for them, but had rejected it for fear of discrimination. Another issue is the tendency to uh, blame autism on their being trans or blame their being trans on autism or, or suggest that one can't exist because of the other. Um, the idea of uh, Rain Man came up quite a bit, the idea being that you can't be autistic because you don't look exactly like Rain Man. Trans experience was also obviously a common theme. Um, as I mentioned, the need to try out other identities on the way to identifying as trans. Uh, often people will attempt to suppress their gender identity and their understanding of themselves and replace it with any more acceptable identity. But what we also see is that people are, trans autistic people are perhaps more willing to try out different genders and gender expression. Another key uh, 
key finding here is that autistic people tend to see, or at least in the case of the autistic trans autobiographies, they tend to talk about uh, gender roles as inherently arbitrary and meaningless. So for example, the idea that women have to wear skirts and men have to wear pants, uh, and then other more pervasive, uh, more subtle uh, gendered norms. And this can, um, this can interfere with how other people see them transitioning because they don't feel the need to perform their gender in a stereotypically legible manner, or they sometimes do. Community is also uh, another theme. Um, the idea being that trans autistic people have trouble finding community in either the trans or the autistic community uh, and tend to form it amongst themselves. So there's a growing number of community groups uh, and um, self-help groups for people who are both trans and autistic. And autistic concepts of gender was another really salient theme. So uh, one of these was copia, which is that autistic individuals view gender as a copia or tool for inventing multiple possibilities through available sex gender discourses. Uh, gender vague was also mentioned and that came up in quite a few biographical texts. Um, and that's a gender identity that is highly influenced and feels undefinable because of one's neurodivergence. Uh, Audi gender wasn't, didn't come up as often, but did come up repeatedly. And then again, the feeling of being genderless. So here are some quotes from the different autobiographical texts that underscore some of the themes I just mentioned. The concept of this anthology seems to demand an answer to the question, is there a connection between transness and autism? My answer is, I'm not sure. My autism and my transness interact, not because of some theoretical linkage between them, but because they are both me. Our society isn't really into that idea though, and over the years I've learned to separate them out, talk about only one. Obviously I'm not gonna read all of these out, I, I wish I could, we just don't have that time. So some of the conclusions we see is that trans autistic autobiography, at least that which declares itself to be such, is often nested in other genres. What that means is anthologies, obviously, uh, those that focus on sexuality, those that focus on autism. Uh, it's relatively rare to see um, trans autistic autobiography occur in text specific to that experience. A uh, notable exa uh, example or exception to that is Max Sparrow's Spectrums, where I believe about 35 different texts come from. And that's a series, it's an anthology and it's a series of different uh, writings by people who are trans and autistic. There's also another similar text coming out in 2021 by Jessica Kingsley Publishers. We also see that trans autistic people are a heterogeneous group with a multiplicity of experiences regarding gender identity formation and healthcare goals and needs. Uh, what this means is that, as I noted, there are some common themes uh, but there's also a wide array of experience. A wide array of experience. Thank you. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be available to answer them. <laughs>